Hi there, Physics 131. So this is chapter nine, the first pre-class video, just to introduce you to the reading. Uh, so it's called Rotational Motion. It opens with this beautiful sunset photo of a radio observatory. So this is an astronomical observatory looking at radio waves. And it talks a little bit about uh, a discovery of a pulsar. So a pulsar is a star which has collapsed and is now rotating very, very fast. And it has uh, a magnetic field axis which is not aligned with its rotation axis. And what that does is it causes electrons to, to spiral around the magnetic field <coughs> emitting radio waves and then as the star rotates you get pulses of radio waves coming uh, coming from the star every second or so so uh, it talks about rotating objects how can a star rotate a thousand times faster than a merry-go-round uh, why is it more difficult to balance on a stopped bike than a moving bike this is which is about uh, conservation of uh, angular momentum uh, rotational momentum so uh, and how is the moon's uh, slowing slowing the earth's rate of rotation so that's just a little intro Section 9.1 is called uh, Rotational Kinematics. So this should remind you of the kinematics stuff we did way back in, in chapter two, but now it's all about rotational stuff. And I talked about this a little bit in class already, but uh, so here it is. Um, basically you have a rotating object like a disc and you can think about you know, a coin sitting on that disc as you're viewing it from atop and it's rotating around, the coin will be going at different speeds depending on how far it is from the axis. But it'll, any, no matter what distance it is from the axis, it'll rotate through the same amount of angle per time. So we define these new things. The first is theta, which is the rotational, or I guess parentheses, angular position. Sometimes I call it angular, sometimes I call it rotational. Uh, so let's call it rotational. The rotational position is this angle theta as measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. So there it is, the units, it turns out to be radians. Uh, a radian is defined so that if you go 360 degrees around, that's 2 pi radians. It's just another unit of angle. So you can use degrees or you can use radians. Uh, the SI unit of angular position is the radian. So important to use it. Uh, if you do that, then you get this uh, arc length, S. And this equation, uh, 9.1, which is the angle, angular position, is the arc length divided by r. Okay, and uh, the next one, and then I guess you can rearrange that to give you the arc length is r times theta, if theta is measured in radians. Next concept is rotational velocity, omega. So that is just, I guess, the change in angular position, delta theta, divided by the change in time. Omega equals delta theta over delta t. And it's positive for clockwise turning and negative, sorry, positive for counterclockwise turning and negative for clockwise turning as seen looking along the axis of rotation. And there's an equation for that somewhere. Oh yeah, well, we'll get back to it. Um, and then lastly, there's rotational acceleration, uh, which is actually an alpha. Um, it's, looks a little strange here on my screen, but this is the, the symbol. Uh, you can see it right there for, for rotational acceleration, alpha. Uh, it doesn't quite look like an A. It's delta omega divided by delta T, and that's measured in radians per second squared. And it just measures how kind of fast something is changing its angular or its rotational velocity. So, uh, and then it relates translation, translational and rotational quantities. So 9.1, we already have that the arc length, I guess, is r times theta. Next is equation 9.4. The tangential velocity is r times omega, the rotational velocity. So the radians per second times r gives you the tangential acceleration. And lastly, equation 9.5 is the uh, tangential acceleration in meters per second squared is equal to r times alpha in radians per second squared. So those are really useful equations. 
It, what it basically means for this uh, v is equal to v, v tangential is equal to r times theta. So theta is a constant for rotating stick or something, but if if you go to different values of r, you get different tangential velocities. I guess it goes to zero at the pole, and then it go or at the rotation axis, and then it gets bigger and bigger. V t gets bigger and bigger as r gets bigger. Um, talks a little bit about black holes. There's a nice picture of that. Um, rotational motion at constant acceleration. So if alpha is constant, then you have these equations uh, which are analogous to the kinematics equations from chapter two, but now you've got rotational motion. So instead of V is V zero plus A times T, you've got omega is omega zero plus alpha times T. And then theta is uh, initial theta plus omega initial times t plus one half alpha t squared. And then this equation, uh, two times alpha is the change in angular position times omega final squared minus omega initial squared. So these can be really useful if you're looking, if you know that the angular acceleration of an object is constant. For example, maybe it has a constant torque on it. And lastly, section 9.2 today is just a conceptual section talking about what are the physical um, quantities that affect this rotational acceleration. So section 9.3 will be the, the actual Newton's uh, law for uh, rotation, but, um, but this just shows you, it's this, well, there's some videos, I guess, of uh, a bar with two little fans on it, and it can rotate around uh, a vertical axis. So there's a few experiments, and I encourage you to, to watch the, the video. But basically, experiment one is you turn on the fan and it blows inward, and of course it doesn't rotate. Uh, second experiment is that you turn the fan on uh, so that it's pointing uh, perpendicular and of course it speeds the thing up and the third experiment is you turn both fans on so that they're both producing producing a counterclockwise torque and what you see is the acceleration is twice as much when there's two fans accelerating it and I think the fourth experiment is just that they turn off both the fans give it a give a shove and you see that it continues to go around at a constant omega constant velocity so there's some idea there that the torque causes this angular acceleration. And if angular acceleration is zero, then omega is constant. And then the second video actually tests taking those fans and changing their distance from the rotation axis. And I think the point of this experiment is just that, I think in experiment one, they turn on one of the fans and they leave this other fan sitting there off and it accelerates at some certain rate. But then they try it again, same fan accelerating it, but they remove the other fan to make it lighter. And what you find is that once this fan is on, it accelerates much more when there's kind of less mass on the ruler. So the, the idea is that um, the rotational acceleration doesn't, doesn't just depend on the net torque, but it also uh, depends on that, the mass and the distribution of the mass. So this is going to get into rotational inertia, which is gonna come up uh, in the next section, sometimes known as the moment of inertia of an object. So rotational inertia I depends both on the total mass of the object and the distribution of that mass about the axis of rotation. So that's just a kind of concept. And next class, we'll get into section 9.3. We'll, we'll put numbers behind all of those. So I'll talk to you then. Bye for now.